Marlena's voice will grab your attention. Her message is vital to anyone who wants to have a voice that makes a positive impression, gets results, and leads to professional and personal success. Speaking on what your voice says about you, please help me welcome Marlena Ray. to listen to me talk like that. <laughs> How many of you were worried? Anybody worried? <laughs> okay. Let me ask you a question. When I started talking like that, how long did it take you to check out? Just say it. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Anybody else? And those in the front were going, oh my gosh, I'm in here in the front. I can't leave in the back front. We're going, I'm glad I'm in the back. Anyway, it takes seconds, only a few seconds, for people to decide whether or not they want to listen to you, believe you, or do business with you based primarily by the sound quality of your voice. You can look really good, have all sorts of expertise, and, and be very, very seasoned. However, it's not until you opened your mouth that you either confirm or negate first impressions. First impressions are very important long-lasting, and the point is your voice makes a difference. So today what we're going to do, my goal for you today, is to, for you to find out the kind of impact that your voice has on other people. It's the first thing. Second thing is that actually we're going to be having a little fun here because I want you to experience your voice sort of in a way that you never have before. And third, I want to have you walk away with three secrets in having a voice that others want to listen to that helps gain retention and gets others to take action. How does that sound? Does that sound pretty good? Okay, good. So here's the first thing, though. In order for you to get the most out of today, of this session, I need your help. And I need a promise from you. So I'd like to have all of you raise your hands. Okay, good. And I'd like you to repeat after me. Say, I... Hi. Marlena Ray. Marlena Ray. Oh, very good. Okay. Your name. I. I. Promise. That I will do all the exercises. That Marlena is going to do today. And. I will do the experiment. I will do the experiment. Okay, good. Now, don't worry, and by the, don't worry about the experiment. It's not dangerous and it's not illegal. Yeah. Anyway, I start speaking that way for a particular reason. When I start talking like that, I did it for a reason. Actually, several reasons. Anybody here tell me what the reasons might be? <laughs> did it work? It worked, okay. Anybody else? To get everybody's attention. That's one, great. Anybody else? Modeling. Pardon? Modeling. Modeling what? What you probably don't want. Good, yes. Anybody else? To recognize what we might do. Recognize what we might do? Good. You wanted to remind me of my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, some people can relate to that. <laughs> All right, but there's another key that's really important because oftentimes people say, well, you know, I have my voice, so what? You know, it's fine. And here's the thing that I want you to get is that the voice is a physical experience. It's a physical experience for me as a speaker, but it's a physical experience for you as a listener. So when I start talking like this, can you not feel it in your body? Or if I talk like this, how does that feel? All right, so yeah, it doesn't feel good, does it? And so what happens is the body starts going into a flight or fight mode. And what happens to my credibility? Right, it goes down. So what we are talking about is how, what, you know, the fact that our voice is very physical for others. And it hasn't anything to do with what we're even saying. I could even do like, ba 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 Can you feel that with your body? Can you not feel that? So, the next thing is that the voice is, uh, reflects our states. 
That is our emotional state. So if, if we're angry, we had some examples with other speakers about being angry. Anybody know that when you feel angry, does your voice not reflect that? And even in a work situation, actually my husband was telling me, he just got back into town, he said, I went to a restaurant. Obviously the uh, boss gave everybody you know, a really hard time. They had a bad meeting. So everybody came out. They were curt with him and rude to him. And he, you know, graciously said, you know, I don't think it was their fault. But just think about the kind of talk that this manager had with these people before they came out. And, and it made it miserable for everybody in the whole restaurant. So another thing is that it also reflects our mental states. So if we don't like our job, do you think that our voice reflects that? Do you think customers can hear that? Do you think members can hear that? Absolutely. Our voice also reflects our physical states, how we feel physically. So if we're sick, right? have you ever done this? Um, let's say you have to call into work sick, and you want to make sure they believe you. <laughs> You're feeling a little guilty. No one has ever called in sick when they haven't been sick, right? So, and so what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to get into that whole frame of mind of, oh, yeah, I'm really sick, and I want to make sure they believe me. And so you physically get into it. And like, oh, yeah, I feel bad. And, Hi, this is Marlene. I'm not going to be there. So my point is that it's very physical. It's physical for me. It's also physical for the person, because we want to portray a certain image. Another thing is that the voice, people re think about our personalities in relation to our voice. So when I started speaking like this, what kind of person did you think I am? A pain. A pain. <laughs> and that might not even be true, you know, but that's the way it is. And or if, um, oh, I remember the first time I ever saw a, um, a Rambo movie, a Rambo movie, you know, with Sylvester Stallone, and he came out with his muscle shirt on and his muscles all greased up, and he was looking good, I have to admit. I was going, wow, this is a good movie. Soldier of Fortune really going toward his goal. He really had, had it, you know, and then he said his first word halfway through, which was, yo. <laughs> and I went, oh my gosh. Oh no, I hope he doesn't have any more words. <laughs> Because I had this, this idea that he really had it together. I love a man with brawn, but boy, the brains is really important too. Here's the thing, is that, you know, when I'm talking about the voice, what I'm talking about is the range of the voice. Oftentimes, when we talk about business, people say, well, I want to sound professional. Things have really sh shifted and changed. And the reason is, as Tom Peters says in his book, Crazy Times for Crazy Organizations, it's true. We all have businesses that are pretty much the same. We offer services that are pretty much the same. Even the prices are pretty much the same. The one thing, the one thing that really differentiates ourselves from other people, from other businesses, is how we treat people on a personal level on a personal level.